Obviously, the more layers you add to a composition, the more complex that composition becomes. And you should always be looking to keep your compositions efficient by minimizing unnecessary layers. So let's take a look at how you might use effect masks and effect input layer options to minimize the layers you're using. I've got a couple of layers here, an atom array. This has transparency. And this triangle's background layer, both rendered out of Cinema 4D. So I'm going to create a look using these two layers by adding masks, using mats, adding effects, but I'm only going to use these two layers. I'm not going to pre-compose or add any adjustment layers. So the first thing I want to do is add a mask to the atom array layer just by double clicking on the oval mask tool. Double click the mask, hold down shift and control or command on Mac. Okay, so now I want to use the atom array as a mat for the triangles background. And I could create a track mat, but I'm going to use the set mat effect, which is going to be more flexible. So I'll select the triangles background layer. Just going to turn this layer off for now. Come up to my effect and presets panel, type in set. Now you can see I haven't finished typing in set mat, but I've isolated just the set mat effect. So I don't have to click it. I can just hit the enter key and that will apply that. And for take mat from layer, I'm going to choose atom array. Okay, so it works kind of as expected, but you can see the atom array layer hasn't recognized the mask. And this is where you can use input layer options. So if I click on this source drop down and choose masks, now the set matte effect applied to the triangles layer is recognizing the mask applied to the atom array. And that would have worked if we'd used a track mat or if I'd pre-composed this triangles background layer, but that's now unnecessary. And the set matte effect has been in After Effects for a long time, but it has had its limitations. But input layer options now make it much more useful. Okay, so let's invert the mat. And now I want to apply an effect to the atom array layer. So I'm going to select atom array. Just turn that on. And I'm going to use the simple choker effect. Once again, hitting enter. And I'm just going to choke that mat. Okay, so you see it's working on the atom array layer, but it's not doing anything to the triangle's background layer. Let's just turn that off. So once again, I'll select triangle's background. And this time, rather than choosing masks, I'm going to choose effects and masks. All right, so now the set matte effect is recognizing both the mask and the effect applied to the atom array layer. And again, I haven't had to use a track mat or pre-compose. And if I move that triangle's background layer around, you can see the mat moves with it, which is really flexible. If I had a track mat, then of course I've got to select both layers, then I can move them. Okay, so now let's apply a blur effect to the triangle's background. I'm going to choose fast box blur. And just increase the blur radius. And this is blurring everything, but I want to isolate the blur effect to only this outside area. And I could use an adjustment layer, but of course I don't want to create any extra layers. So in this case, I'm going to use a mask and I'm going to copy the mask from the atom array layer. Just select it. Control Alt C, Command Option C on Mac to copy with property links. Select triangles background and paste. And there's all of our connected properties. Now the mask has worked as expected. It's masked out the triangles background layer. I want to set that to subtract. Type in compositing or compos. And then down here under fast box blur, under compositing options, I'm going to click the plus button. And that's going to make mask one, mask reference one. Now I probably should name this mask. And you can see here mask reference one is using the blur mask. So I've used the mask to mask the effect and not the layer which is so useful. As you start doing this, you'll find yourself using way less adjustment layers and way less pre-composing. Just make some adjustments to this box blur effect and repeat edge pixels. And of course, because we've linked the mask to the mask above, any changes I make to the atom array mask are going to affect the blur mask as well. I might just come over to the atom array effect and just adjust that a little bit. Okay, so let's add some more effects. And I'm going to apply the tritone effect. Now I've got more than one effect that's come up in the search. 
So hitting enter is not going to work in this case. So I'm going to double click try tone to apply that. Come down to midtones and just make this nice blue color. Be something like that. Also, I want to apply the exposure effect just to give this a little more contrast. I'm going to put that up the top. Increase the exposure. And just drop down the offset just to give this a little more contrast. Now, I'd like to make this look a little warmer down the bottom. So I'm going to use the hue and saturation effect for that. Hue saturation. And I'm going to change the master hue. But of course, this is going to affect the entire layer. So once again, I can use effect masks. But in this case, I want to create a brand new mask. Let's make this something a little warmer like this. Okay, so new mask. Rectangular mask. I'm going to name this hue. Grab the mask and just pull it down. And as expected, it's going to mask out the layer. Once again, I'm going to type in COMPO just to find the compositing options. Come down to hue saturation. Click on the plus sign. And it's going to apply the blur mask, but I want the hue mask. So you can see how important it is to actually name the masks. This is just outside the viewable area here. Now I want to adjust the feather as well. Just uncheck that and I'm going to adjust the feather on the Y. So once again, we haven't had to use an adjustment layer to change the hue of this section. All right, I'm going to apply the curves effect next because I want to darken this outside area. Just bring that down. Now for this one, I can use the blur mask. Next, I want to apply CC Glass. And for the bump map for this, I'm going to choose Atom Array. And once again, you can see that's affected the entire layer. So from my input layer options, I'm going to choose Effects and Masks. And I'm going to set the property to Alpha. Okay, so now we're only affecting this central area. It's going to adjust the softness a little bit. Okay, looking good. Next, I'm going to apply the drop shadow effect. Normally I drop a solid behind this, but I don't want to create any new layers. So I'm going to use the solid composite effect. And just find a decent color for that. Maybe something like that. Let's come back to my drop shadow. Now obviously I could keep adding more and more effects. And of course we still only have two layers. And I can drag that triangle's background layer and still not cause any problems for the map that I set up. So up until the recent past, I definitely would have done more pre-composing and used at least one or two adjustment layers in this look. But as you can see, using input layer options and effect masks really help you minimize how many layers you have to use.